Welcome back. I've been wanting to do this design for a while. Uh, just to show you that you can make a uh, hot water uh, solar diverter uh, out of just about anything. So what I have is uh, an IR2103. That's an H-bridge driver. Uh, one side's inverting, the other isn't. You can also use a 2102, and in that case, you'd connect up the resistor to this uh, lower section. That's, uh, I think this is five. We'll just guess at that. You can check it. But anyways, two and three need to be connected up together. Because there's one thing about inverting H drivers, and that is... Uh, Internally, they have a circuit which does not allow them both to come on at the same time. So if you if you kept uh, an unused uh, gate f just floating, uh, it could lock up on you. And so you can't tie this to a high or low state. And the pins are right next to each other, so it's just easier to uh, connect them together. And unfortunately, it'd be nice if you could just connect this to the output there and have two output drivers, but, you know, for even more drive to more FETs, but uh, you can't do that. Uh, and again, any inverting type driver uh, you can use, you know, in just a single package. No need to have a high current driver because we got a 27 ohm resistor here driving the gate. We want this to be slow so it's not noisy. Uh, so again, a very simple uh, Zener voltage supply. I use a 13 volt Zener and 100 microfarads. Uh, three half watt uh, 1K resistors in series. You can add an extra 1K for each additional uh, 15 volts. That gives you about 15 milliamps coming in the circuit should only draw about maybe eight. So, uh, you know, there's plenty of room there. I use a 300K because, uh, quite frankly, I have a, a, a roll of 2,000 of these. They're special high voltage. They can take a two, kilo, two kilovolt pulse. And uh, so a standard resistor would be a 270. Uh, if you're using regular resistors, I'd put two in series to have uh, extra provision for uh, a, a, a lightning sp strike uh, nearby that might put a pulse on it. Uh, most resistors break down at about 200 to 300 volts. So uh, yeah, a couple of those in series is always better. So 250 Ks. <clears throat> I use a 50 to 100 K pot and I put it in series, and the reason I do that is that uh, if the wiper opens or there's any damage to the pot, most likely it will end up in an open situation, and that turns off anything. So if you didn't want to calculate with uh, you're using with resistors, there's online uh, calculators that can do a voltage divider. You want to set this for about 2.5 volts, so whatever pot it is, you know, divide the resistance in half, add it to the 300K, put your voltage in, and it'll tell you what uh, resistor you use. For 60 volts, I use two 6.8K. Uh, if you don't have a vast supply of electronic parts, I'm trying to make everything so everything is a 6.8K, so you're not buying so many resistors. Again, a little filter capacitor on the input. This is a TL431. You can find them in any old wall wart. Uh, looking at the flat face, the reference is on the left. Uh, center goes to ground, and the other pin goes up there. We have uh, a red LED. We use that to subtract voltage. This, at best, can go down to about 2 volts. Uh, so anyways, you want to be able to subtract off 1.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.65. So about, about 2.1 volts you can subtract off this, and that brings us down to zero. Uh, this will 
uh, you want to use a driver and the main reason I'm using a driver is because it has a Sch Schmidt trigger input so there's a voltage differential we're doing time delays here to prevent short pulses and there are some uh, uh, drivers that do not have a low voltage lockout because they're designed to work with low voltage CMOS uh, you want to have one that has at least a turn on at about 10 volts they'll turn on about 10 volts turn off at about 8 you need that low voltage lockout there are lots of, of drivers that do not have that you do not want to get into that situation you're going to blow up your FET so anyways we got the voltage divider here uh, at 10 volts this can be to uh, 0 to 4 volts on the input so that's nice uh, it turns on at uh, close to 3 volts 2.8 depending 3 volts is guaranteed so you got 4 volts and on the low end it's guaranteed to turn off by 0 0.8 and you'll get down to uh, you know at least 0.1 volts so you're sure to turn off but it's a very simple circuit uh, basically uh, when the voltage goes over 2.5 volts uh, this conducts and it conducts down to like I say between 2.5 and 2 volts and a really hard drive uh, You could eliminate this resistor if you wanted, but I wouldn't uh, because just a hair over 2.5 volts <laughs> This input looks just like a Zener you need to protect it from current and your other resistors will do that, but uh, if you're trying to measure voltage here uh It'll be very difficult to do without having this resistor. And frankly, I would put, uh, you know, two 6.8 Ks in series. But like I say, it's a very simple circuit and I like it. And you drive a FET and the FET has three pins. The one on the far left with the numbers facing you is the gate. Center is the drain that connects to your heating element and PV. And of course, you need a capacitor bank you need about 6,000 microfarads and the more capacitors the better uh, you can go under that but you want to have a bunch of capacitors if you're just taking scrap capacitors because uh, in the setup I show you uh, I have capacitors that are rated for for three amps they're switching power supply capacitors very high grade and most capacitors are only rated for about one amp so and again, your, your source ties to ground. Uh, you want to have the capacitor bank going directly to the source, uh, not through any circuitry that you have here. Uh, you know, the resistance of the, uh, the, the foil with a couple amps is going to introduce noise. But this is quite stable. So let's go down and look at it in the basement. Yeah. Focus, focus. Anyways, the yellow is the uh, voltage on the capacitor bank. At this point here, uh, this is the turn on point. I wish this wasn't so fuzzy. And uh, as you can see, this is the voltage going uh, to the IR2103 and uh, the gate you can see it dripping down so it turns on here turns off there works kind of nice the board is teeny I got this barely even a heat sink two capacitors the TL431 is here your adjustment pot uh, so I can set this any voltage I want And I got a 60 volt array, so that's what I'm going to leave it at. Uh, I'll tell you something. These meters are terrible. Uh, this is not 1.32 amps. It's much higher than that. So I have uh, about, th I got five of these, and uh, three of them are bad. Uh, this one reads zero current most of the time. 
So this is my water heater box. I'm just using the capacitor bank. So I have DC positive and the two high currents, which go to the FET. Uh, this goes to the water heater and this goes to ground. So I'm just using existing connections going over to the water heater. Uh, it makes it nice. I can test a bunch of circuits. And, <laughs> believe it or not, I'm holding this on with alien tape. Yes, uh, I got some off Amazon. Uh, they call it nano tape. Uh, really nice for holding on, uh, you know, boards which have a flat surface. Uh, you know, uh, if you do hot melt glue, after a while that begins to age and pop off. It doesn't stick to many things. Uh, this... I did a double piece together. I think this uh, tape is like three quarter inch wide. So it's <laughs> really nice for holding things and I can remove it. So, you know, a shout out for alien tape and look at it, nice and stable. This works great.